think that we've now been teaching it, well, since 2002, that's 12 years. What if you could time travel with them? Visit mythical places or angelic realms, other worlds, other galaxies. Help others to speak to their higher selves. You can. Dolores has taught thousands of people from across the world how to use QHHT and now you can learn her method by going directly to DoloresCannon.com and don't forget to mention the discount code MORETALKS. directly with spirit guides, teachers, or non-physical consciousness, or even our higher selves, what would they tell us? My name is Kevin Moore, and since 2015, I started to practice a form of communication which is termed channeling. I have been interviewing experts on my talk show to find out does life continue after we die, and can we communicate with those that have crossed over? With each expert I spoke to, they all had different ideas. Is there knowledge from the past which could be shared with the present moment? So I thought, why not just speak to the non-physical world directly through channelers around the world? And that's what I set out to do. They call us channelers will take the viewers on a journey into the phenomena known as channeling. And my main goal with this docu-series is to bring a new understanding and awareness to channeling by looking within ourselves and asking, is it truly possible that we can all use this innate ability? I'm in South Africa. And how long have you been there for? Uh, 12, 12 to 13 years now, but I'm from Milano. I'm from Italy. I grew up in Italy and in Milano, and then I traveled. I lived in New York for a bit. Um, I was in Paris for a while, and then I moved here like in my early 20s, and I decided to stay. Wow. So obviously your parents are there with you now as well. Yeah. Yeah. They moved here like 17 years ago. Yeah, well, that must have been very nice to have your parents uh, come and support you there. And it, I mean, God, it must have been a life changing thing for them in so many ways to come over to South yeah. Africa. Yeah, yeah. Well, they ended up um, coming here to retire because the quality of life here compared to Italy, like, and I'm from Milano, which is very gray, very city, very dense, um, you know, energy in it. So, um, and I do believe that we were relocated for a reason. I'm in a specific area right now where I'm doing some work. Um, so they've said to me that they, I have been relocated here for, and I do move around the country. I do do work um, on the grid structure of, of the country. I work a lot in Cape Town town by Table Mountain. I'm right now up here. Um, I stay near the Kruger Park. So there's a few sacred sites that I do work here as well. So they do move me around a little bit um, around the country to do my work. So yeah. It's just fascinating to have all these different people come on from different parts of the world, you know, holding that energy and, and doing the work that you're doing. It's, it's uh, Do you have a bit of a following in South Africa then or? Um, yeah, it's quite interesting because it, I, I was in um, Cape Town recently and some people actually stopped me and said, thank you for your work and for what you do. So it's quite nice. Most of my clients are um, in the US. I do also quite a lot like Australia, New Zealand and Europe. Um, but I do have a few South Africans as well. Um, yeah, who follow me and, and, and to know and follow the work that I do. But I mainly work. Um, yeah, I actually work with people from all over the place. I can't really say like I work with one 
you know, or the other, but mainly the States, I would say, if I'd have to say, you know, but it's, it's very, very varied. And so interesting, since the opening of the Lionsgate portal last year, before I was working maybe 65% women, 35% men. Now um, I've gone to like 50-50. So a lot more men have been actually coming to me for work in the past like six months or so. So it's been very interesting to see how collectively things have evolved. That is interesting, actually. Yeah, that's a big shift. Well, there's been lots of big shifts. There's big shifts going on as we speak the whole world is changing right now and going through a massive shift and i do believe we're just at the beginning of that change as well but um that's just my opinion and change is okay um it's it, we're not talking about the end we're talking about change so um if you could sum up just what you do because i i have you down here as a spiritual coach a light language channeler yeah so <laughs> I would say I'm an Ascension energy activator. So this is the term that they sent to me. Um, I, I'm not a big fan of like, um, you know, uh, labels and attachments to identity. I think that we can all be anything and everything that we want all the time. Um, but I would say I'm an Ascension energy activator. So the work that I do really, really helps people tune into their own power. I also train light workers to actually learn to do what I do. So then they can go out and heal and train more people like that, you know, um, domino catalyst effect. Um, um, and, and yes, and I am also like a channeler. Um, I do work on the grid and I work on people's energy fields. So, I mean, I, I think, yeah, I wouldn't really like say one term. I'd say like I do quite a few different things, but all in that uh, quite niche area um, of the work. I mean, I used to do um, tarots and help people cross over. Like I can do all of that psychic stuff as well, but it's just not what I um, preferred going into, if it makes sense. No, abs know? absolutely. This is this is your purpose. This is where your passion is. And this is what's um, really, you've had no choice really, but it's kind of forced you in to this direction. And we're going to get into that as well, how, how that happened. I think while we're just on this conversation, let's just touch upon um, how people can um, get a, a session with you and what different types of session you do. So firstly, what's your website? Um, it's uh, www.altealucrezia, so it's my first name and second name, .com, um, so quite simple, and then just directly in my store page, you can like purchase the service directly from there, and there's all the different options and explanations, so there's the chakra lining and balancing, um, which all my services are, do you clear your energy field, they just do it on different levels, some of it go into past life, um, so I will go in, I will see the karmic ties, the cords, and what it is that needs to to be resolved like I don't know there's a blockage in your throat you are hung or suffocated I will help you move and clear through that um, then I do high chakra attunements like I mentioned earlier so um, um, that is divided in two different sessions um, and yeah I've also um, written an ebook I think two years ago I wrote it I think it was 20, 2020 yeah, two years ago <laughs> um, which is quite quick it's like a very quick guide on um, how to remove your own energy cords so understanding how these chords work so like um, sexual chords family chords past life chords um, collective chords all the different chords that you form when there's an alignment and frequency um, with, with a person you're communicating and connecting with and how to um, release the ones that don't serve you anymore. Um, so that one, like that's, that's really nice. And then I've got a psychic activation course also that I channeled about a year and a half ago. So I also want to say everything in my website is channeled down to the colors of my website. Um, Altea doesn't really invent anything. Altea listens and Altea does what she gets told to do. <laughs> I think that's that's very important to to say because um, there's a lot of people doing a lot of different things and I try to evolve in my work um, like the frequency of the plant is evolving every every week every day something changes um, but generally those are my standard um, yeah clearings that I do I also coach people I take them through programs I've got a six-week program that I channel where I take through people and the way it works is we start in like third dimensional density then like into 4d and then into 5d um, and that covers actually all my services so if someone wants a complete package then they can just take my six-week program program um, which covers everything that I offer and yeah you do offer quite a bit as well and um, just for you know the uh, understanding of what a client might uh, you know experience when they come see you if they've got questions that they want to ask you know they've got whatever whatever it is that that's on their mind you know I think the way you work we were talking about this off air that you you know you get them to ask their questions before the session 
um, and then during the session those questions are answered yes correct okay yeah um and how would they know and, and is, is that with most sessions that sort of process can take place like that uh, yeah, I would say so. Yeah, I would say so. Every session they can ask anything, anything really they can ask. Um, and then generally, like they'll get an answer. It really depends. Some things we're not meant to know. Um, so some things won't necessarily come through, you know. Um, and I think, yeah, it's also very important to, this is what I always say to everyone all the time, to not really have attachment to whatever comes through, observe it, integrate it, and then release it because, uh, you know, things are always changing all the time. Um, so, yeah, it's just important, you know. But, yeah, I, do, I mean, generally, most people actually don't really have questions. They just entrust, which I think is very beautiful. So what comes through for them is what they're meant to hear at that moment in time. Some of them have questions regarding chords or regarding, like, a big one is like the root out of balance, abandonment wound, not enough self-trust, self-love, believing in themselves. So that's quite a big one that comes through. Another big one is also um, blockages in the solar plexus, um, you know, collective cording emotions that get stuck. They need to be released. Um, so there's a few different themes that I see because um, I've worked like. I mean, I've worked on over a thousand people now. So like there really are things that everyone um, you know, we, we don't get taught how energy works in schools, so we don't we don't know how these things work. So it's a little bit trial and error. And because I've done a lot of trial and error, <laughs> now I can assist um, other people in, in, you know, in their own. Yeah. And you've lived your own experiences, which we're going to get into as well. Um, the book that's uh, again in the links in the description of this YouTube video, including the book. The book's been coming up on the screen as well. And uh, for the podcast, yeah, just uh, obviously go to to the website that we just mentioned there as well. But we'll keep mentioning that website throughout as well. The chords, oh my god, that's oh god, that's a show in its own right, isn't it? How so many people are affected by that. The chords on all sorts of variations of, of that subject, you know what I mean? And how it really bloody pains people, don't it, when they've got the, you know, that whatever issues they've got that they drag throughout this life and they just can't seem to, to let them go, can they? That's the, it's painful to see. Yeah. I think where I come in and can assist with that is, especially in past lifetimes, uh, well, there's no past, present, future. We're just going to use the term past for you know convenience of, of understanding. But um, when it comes to um, karmic ties and chords like that, which is a little bit different from chords, you know, in third dimensional density, when it comes to those chords, um, I think um, the way I understand it and see it is having knowledge of them is already halfway there to healing them and then really sending a love and compassion and understanding to yourself back then to your experience to what it is that happened and forgiveness to yourself you know and it, it really all goes back in the end to self-love um, we actually get programmed to not love ourselves and when we start to and become more into self-love so another thing that I do that I can mention this as well is soul fragment retrieval so soul fragment retrieval comes in with um, the Akashic clearing so what happens is I'll do this in light language activations as well whenever it's needed I'll do it and what I'll do is I'll actually be able to see the timelines um, that need to be cleared and I will physically clear them and as I clear and release the timelines I'll open portals and actually retrieve and integrate shards of soul fragment I see them as like crystalline sparkling things and then anchor them into people's um, into people's energy field and into people's soul actually into their soul um, but I will leave out what it is that you know, doesn't serve them for the highest purpose or what it is that needs to be cleared. So whether it's, I don't know, a not feeling good enough pattern or an abuse pattern or whatnot, like I release that. So this is how I work differently from a lot of people who do soul fragment retrieval. A lot of people who do soul fragment retrieval. They retrieve the whole of the past life and integrate it. I'm able to actually um, uh, div divide the, the the part that will help them amplify, you know, and, and, and be better to the part that they don't really need anymore. Yeah, I mean, that abandonment one is a big one for people in so many ways. It could have been parent abandonment, even if it, through a death, do you know what I mean? But it feels like an abandonment and two partner abandonment, all sorts of, uh, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, uh, anyway, um, and I know that you're doing your lovely work, which is which is really um, powerful work, uh, which, which I know, you know, is there to help people should they feel the pull to want to take the road to, to come see you because maybe for some people not a lot's been working and um it's time to look for something different and I'm, I'm sure right now you know you're getting busier and busier i mean we you know there's such an epidemic right now of people that need help and it's so interesting a lot of people in the medical field 
because I think they start to see that they can't really get all the answers that they're looking for. So they start turning to spirituality. So that was very interesting when I first started a few years ago, how many people in the medical field actually um, would would turn to, you know, answers from different sources. Well, well I know this is, like I said, maybe this before, this has happened so quick for you. And uh, I mean, what a time for you to come into your power. What a time. Thank you. Uh, it, it's so needed as well and I'm sure there's other people watching this that you know you, you also help to um, to open up to their gifts as well yeah definitely I mean for me I always say anyone can do everything they want anyone can do what I do it's just really is a matter of uh, you know well, wanting it. Um, it there's a lot of discipline like I'm not gonna lie like there's a lot of discipline involved like I'm very very strict with um, what I eat how I exercise how I keep my physical vessel um, clean and clear because the cleaner and the clearer it is the better channel I can be and it also comes a lot with um, releasing any attachment to identity because it's kind of like you as an individual sort of take a step back and allow and surrender and you know and I had a lot of lessons that made me release control because that you know that was my path and what I had to go through so um, uh, because of those lessons that I had I'm able to do what I do now at the level that I do it and I'm still learning I learn every time every session every person I meet I learn and it's important to um, to 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 see that and I also I don't ever want my clients to need me like I, I don't want anyone to have to come back to me to feel like they need me you know they must um, then be able like I teach them to do their own their own healing and their own um, individual work you know and I also believe that when it comes to raising your frequency we need to this is something very important that I always speak about we need to really take care of the physical I don't think enough spiritual people out there actually emphasize it yes maybe the food and whatnot but exercise grounding like it's very very important because when you're raising your frequency you can't just do it on a mental level even the body needs to come you know we are anchored into this reality so everything needs to rise together yeah well i think you're quite physical i think uh, you do yoga and you're probably yeah. weight training yeah. a bit too yeah, I do. I do. So I was actually told, <laughs> this is quite funny. I was actually told, um, I think around September of last year to put on muscle on my upper body because of the, um, when I do lives, I'll have maybe like two, 300 people live and I'll actually start channeling um, frequency. And because of the level of frequency that I need to withstand, they actually said to me, you need to actually put on more muscle. I do both the yoga and like, um, like uh, weights and cardio, because I find that the combination of the two really really helps the yoga maintains the alignment and the rest of the exercise is actually very grounding so again like i'm obviously more extreme case because of what i do this is my life um but just in general if someone wants to you know get to a point where mm, you know they 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 you know they need to take care of their body they need to yeah and and <laughs> this is also quite interesting when you get to a certain frequency um you actually start transmuting everything that you put into your body like i don't eat meat i don't eat fish um i'm not like a strict vegan i follow an intuitive diet so i'll occasionally eat a little bit of cheese um you know there sometimes i'll eat like eggs occasionally as well um but if i would eat meat now i haven't in 12 years but if i would eat it my system would actually convert it um, because when you reach a certain frequency, whatever you put in your system actually converts it. Um, so that's something interesting that I've learned as well in my journeys. No, no, uh, 12 years. Wow. That's a hats off to you. Um, I, I mean, I eat meat, I mean, but you know, there, there's no, um, if you're ready to go down that path and that's what, that's what you want to do and, you, and it actually helps you and make, and it does work for you absolutely do that and uh, I, I think we're all at a different stage and I think as well you know not just the body but also what we put into us chemically as well right um, that has a big uh, a big effect doesn't it it's, it's all about addictions sometimes isn't it in, in, in some of this stuff um, but uh, yeah, I mean, we live in a, you know, I mean, America, it's all about, you know, I should, well, should I say this or not? But yeah, <laughs> well, it, there's a big drug issue, isn't there? You know, it's so easy for a doctor just to push a drug to you. Do you know what I mean? And uh, yes, you do need them sometimes and they are helpful, but there is an addiction level that can, you know, keep you on that path when you don't need it. And uh, yeah, I, I see that sometimes. Yeah, I think it's important for people to understand that, 
you know, they can really, really have and achieve anything without these things. Like even for me, like um, I used to really, really enjoy coffee. And then I realized one morning, like, I would wake up and feel like I really needed it to wake up. And that's an attachment. And like, that was really not consistent in alignment with what I do. So I was like, no. So then I just stopped drinking coffee. Um, I actually didn't even really miss it at all. But that that's, you know, um, and I do think like in the society where we are now, we are brought to, you know, uh, consumerism and as you said addiction um you know like I don't think they had these problems in like you know like free story or something like that it's because the society is always bombarding um, people with things and 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 they feel like you need this and you need that but that addiction comes from a place of lack I also think there's actually a problem in institutions that take care of people with addictions because they just I've got a few friends who were in rehab and when they came out they actually they substitute one addiction with another they don't teach them that they don't need to have anything and they can just give all that love to themselves you know um but also this is where the cording comes in a lot of people are empaths sensitive and they are overwhelmed by the energy they're picking up from other people so they take substances to suppress it um and to not feel uh, you know whatever is coming through from other people um so I, it's being mindful and aware you know that that is what's going on oh that, that's so true and all, well, and also maybe also to even if they are empathic they may also be on that addiction to block out um their life <laughs> to block out the pain to block out anything that they've not been dealing with for so long and uh, you know we'll just you know it, that those issues must something as something else and uh, you know when a doctor sees them I mean you know that they, they maybe don't see everything do you know what I mean because obviously the patient's not going to reveal everything so yeah no ha having a sort of you know spiritual look at your life I think there's so many good qualities about that but uh, we've all got our own issues haven't we and uh, n nothing's easy on planet earth and uh, you know there's no judgment in, in anything we're saying I've got my own addictions I'll be honest you know what I mean so um, uh, you know welcome to planet earth I wanted to t touch on something there as well which um, well let's move to this actually when you mention the light language for those who may not know what the light language is or how that works, how would you describe that? How would you explain that to people? Um, okay, um, it's a specific... Okay, so it's a vibration and frequency, but light language can come through in so many different ways with hand gestures, vocalized, written. Um, it's really, really a multi-dimensional language so if you imagine um, i'm going to explain how it works on a scientific well like on a physical and scientific level as well but if you imagine english being the you know language of the earth light language would be that out there galactically there's obviously many different dialects um of the light language um and so this is how i understand that it works and how i see it as well so when it comes through a specific vibration and a specific frequency that anchors directly into your DNA structure um, and bypasses the conscious mind. When I do the hand movements, so those who have seen my videos and will see later when I open channel, um, they will see that I do specific hand movements. So the way that I actually see and understand it is there's actually light coming out of my hands and anchoring into the grid of third dimensional density to raise that frequency. Does it make sense? Yeah, so it's it's more of, you know, to try to understand what's being said, it's never going to be decoded, right? But it's how, yeah. how, how does it feel? How, how does that, you know, it's a feeling process as well, isn't it? Yeah, it's 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 really about feeling it with your heart center um, and letting go of the ego conscious mind of trying to understand. There are certain things that um, um, recur in certain sounds and whatnot, but it cannot be translated into a human language like we understand English or whatever other language, because the term language in itself is also like a limiting word for what light language is it's it's a language of the soul so it would be like limiting the expression of the soul yeah um and uh you know kudos to you for doing it because uh for some people you know i suppose the ego gets in the way or whatever they you know because it's so um it's not part of the the norm is it in a sense you know we're not you know the, the, even channeling in a sense is is on the fringe of spirituality but it's becoming more mainstream i will say that even within our community there's so much more mainstream so um but i think it's been on the fringe for a while so uh you know kudos for you for having the bravery to live in your path and do what you feel is the right thing to do so yeah 
just want to say that uh, because uh, yeah because you've been through a, a journey as well um i mean if we just go back a bit uh we've all been there you know we all like to party don't we and you would say that you know that was part of your early early sort of 20s was the, the party scene yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. i'd like everyone had my early days um in partying and i think what was happening with me i was drinking i was you know um abusing my body and i wasn't living like a healthy lifestyle and looking back now it was because i was feeling so much all the time and no one taught me about you know how to shield my energy how to remove cording and whatnot so i spiraled down quite a hectic path um before i had like i had i, I actually ended up in hospital and i had to have um operations and then that was a very very big wake up call for me um it was it was like it was it was like well okay like it's you know i was still young i was like 26 27 i was like you know i don't want to <laughs> you know <laughs> mess up my body so young um and but see everything in my life has been like that like um i've always had very very um lessons in my face because i wasn't listening i wasn't in the universe so they had to show me i would not have understood in any other way um and i think because of the level of 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 depth of trauma that i went through with that in my relationship after as well i was in an abusive relationship um with my father's daughter like he tried to murder me um when i was four months pregnant like it was like this whole um roller coaster that they put me through in the span of like two to three years um which quick like it was very quick because i needed to be where i am now to do the work that i'm doing now before um, uh, everything hits on the planet, um, uh, so I was, could see that. Do you know? Do you know that? Um, I'm, I'm sure you could. I mean, even though you can forgive, but forgetting, as you would probably say, is a different thing, right? Um, I don't think you ever, ever forget once you go through an experience like that. And uh, yeah, I mean, you you would call your uh, lifestyle change when you, you when you were diagnosed with uh, your, your health issue, which is now all cleared up, I'm sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but you know, you was in hospital and it was serious. Uh, that was almost like a near death experience for you, I guess, in some respects. Yeah. 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 Well, I basically had a, a a huge kidney stone that almost exploded. Like it blocked my kidney, and my kidney almost exploded in my body, and they had to um, emergency operate me. So it was very painful. Yeah, it was very painful. I had they had to insert a tube um, within within my 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 kidney. Um, I had to keep that for three weeks, and then I went back and I had that removed for a second operation. Um, and then I was healing and I was fine, and I've never ever ever had any problems since. Um, it also taught me something else: how um, we need to really embrace the balance between the westernized and modern medicine and the natural path. Because I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for that. So. Um, um, I, I, I would never say, you know, to like shun that completely and just use natural herbs and whatnot. Obviously, if you can avoid medication, avoid it, but it can really be used, you know, for good. Like we are evolving. So. Of course <laughs> it can. It's important. Yeah, I think you're right. It's a balance. It's not. Yeah. It, uh, yeah. So agree with that. Thank you for saying that. Um, just I, well and I get, I get you know all this change you were going through you know there you probably you know you was more or you felt like you know you always had to be in control of life before but right now I'm guessing it's just flow 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 just go with it you know all you know you've changed so much you know even just as control it's one thing right we we all want control don't we but are we in so much control sometimes I don't know yeah, for me, that was a big one, control, eh? Like, I had to release control over my body. I was pregnant. Um, control over my finances, over my relationship. I had to release. That's literally, that was the big lesson for me. Like, release all control. Now you can't control anything. Okay, well, now I've lost it all. Now what? Like, now I don't want control over anything. I don't, it's not that I don't care. Now I trust because I am where I am now. Um, because I listened, I asked, I listened, I asked, this is what I always say also to my clients, guys, ask your guides for help. There is the law of non-intervention unless you call them and ask them, they can't help you. So it's really important. Like I really, really asked. And then I started listening more and following and still now I'm listening, you know, and following and surrendering and trusting. Um, so, so yeah, but it's a it, bit it, it like life made it so that, you know, my my pre-contracted challenges and whatnot made it so that, um, you know, I am where I am now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what was influencing you at the time when you was going through, you know, you, you're at the, the worst, well, not the worst, but you're at, you're at an extreme level in life, right, with, with so much going on. 
what was influencing you? What was helping guide you? Do you think was there anything? Was there any sort of books you were reading, or was it the voice was there? You know, you felt that there was a great, there was a greatness that that there was something that opened up within you, and that you knew there was something more calling you. I mean, um, that's a good question. I think I always knew, like I've always channeled in different ways, not necessarily the light language, but I've always channeled. I've always uh being psychic in a way i always would get prophetic dreaming so i always knew that there was more i had a very very intense experience in 2018 just like a few months after my operation um i actually had three gray beings in my room who tried to like abduct me and who literally were like working on my body it was very intense. Um, so what happened is I was actually dreaming in the astral. I'm very conscious in the astral. I've been doing astral work since I was like maybe seven or eight years old, since I can remember. Um, so they always send me all over the world. It's generally planetary work. Sometimes they send me off planet as well, maybe like just outside um, the, the atmosphere, but generally I'm here. And I was running in my dream and I knew that they were coming to get me. And I started, and I knew that there were aliens coming to get me, you know? So this is now like, now I'm at a point where I'm sort of like my awakening is kind of happening. I've just like had all my near death experience. I don't really know like, you know, what's going on. I'm just sort of like winging through life sort of thing, you know. Um, and then as, and then I knew that they were coming for me. And then I start physically feeling prodding in my lower back. And I wake up from the physical feeling. And as I wake up next to me, there's the wall. And then there's the space of this great being. He was wearing like a... A, a black shirt with like sleeves and a, and a collared neck. And I, I saw his face. He was, he must've been maybe like 10 centimeters from my face. And then I get physically pushed back down in my pillow. And as that happens, I hear like scuttling, like running away. I was on the ground floor and my window was open. I was in Milano, I was in Italy and I was in a secure complex. So I'd left my, the, it was like a door window. So one of those yeah so it was open um so and then as i slowly got back up i was completely drenched in sweat um i was terrified i don't think i've ever ever been so scared in my life this is also why now i can do what i do because that was my biggest fear and i faced it and then i released it you know so then I didn't, I knew what had happened to me. Um, I, I knew, like I knew they had been telling me to research alien abduction since I was 12 years old. Um, I had done all my research. So I knew, I knew exactly, but I still wanted to know more. So I went, uh, the next day I was flying back to Cape Town. I flew back home. I booked with a hypnotherapist. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I contacted six different ones before I found the one that I was like, no, 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 this is who I need to go to. She sent me back in the quantum um, realm in regression where I went back and I addressed these beings as my higher self. I went back there over my bed and I actually commanded them to leave because there's no time in the quantum and in the astral. So I could... And it was crazy because they looked at me and they were like, how, yeah, even have goosebumps now saying it. They were like, how is she here in the quantum? They're like, she's not supposed to be here. Like, this isn't supposed to be happening. They're like, uh-uh, we need to leave. Like, they were like, this is not, this is not what we signed up for. You know what I mean? They, you know, so I commanded them to leave and then they left. Um, and I saw the whole scene. There were three of them. They were wearing this kind of like, they almost, they were, the, the one was a gray and then other two were more like, sort of like, insectoidy gray beings they had like a thing on there but I don't know that the frequency was like a cockroach it was very disgusting like that's all I can say um and and yeah and so after that happened to me I was like well if there's bad aliens and there must be good aliens so let me try and contact and be you know and see what happens if I go down that direction and then as my perception shifted and changed and I started understanding that this was all very real, that's when I opened and that's when they started sending me downloads. And for about three months in that year, I was receiving downloads all day and all night. Like literally I was like, I was like, you know, kind of I had a part-time job. So I was kind of working and getting groceries and living, but all I was doing, I was just receiving. I literally like all I was doing, I was just like receiving information, information, information. And because I had been doing the research for the better part of 15 years, all I had to do was connect the dots. So then I, I, I suddenly had all this knowledge and all this information. And then, yeah, and then everything started opening up more and more and more. But that was also very pivotal mm. you know, experience that I had. Yeah. yeah. I mean, do you think you ever look back and think, well, 
what I thought was negative or what I perceived as negative or, or you know, um, repulsive. Actually, that was my blockages and actually it was something quite different to what I even thought that was or could imagine that situation was because you're just not able to understand what was really going on there. Mm. There was another yeah. agenda. I think I think what happened is was necessary and pre-contracted for me to go through it to be to where I am now. Um, I I don't think the beings actually were specifically targeting me, if it makes sense. Obviously, there's no chance everything is, you know, in divine alignment. Um, but what I then actually learned was, uh, and then I started seeing as well, was that um, these beings were actually roaming free and they were literally just trying their luck and by pre-contract or whatever they came and then that happened to me. And I don't see it as a negative experience. I mean, it was incredibly scary and I was terrified, um, but I don't see it as a negative. No, it was an experience. I mean, um, we do still live in polarity. So obviously there is, you know, people can think good, bad or whatever it is, but I believe where we're moving to, we need to integrate everything. So we really need to try, try and stay above the polarity and above the good and above the bad. And there's also like, yeah, there's no wrong. Also, there's just lessons. You know, if something doesn't work, then you try something else. And that was a lesson. This so, yeah. is this is so true. Well, thank you for sharing that. I, I just going back to, um, well, I'm sure you'd agree that anything you've been through, um, I'm sure that, you know, the clients that you get in the future or have had or, you know, are with you now, you know, um, it's only there to, 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 for you to have more empathy and to understand at a deeper level, you know, what these clients have been going through or have gone through, right? So when you talk about a, um, an, uh, an emotionally abusive to almost abusive relationship, um, uh, there's no blame there for whoever this was, right? Um, and, uh, but it's a very difficult thing to have gone through right and unless you've gone through it you know no one understands what it's like you know i mean you can say or, or you know you can say things can't you words but no one understands it unless you've actually you know experienced it and uh uh i, I well i'm sure there'll be other people that come to you that have gone through those types of relationships that, that you'll be able to heal yeah, it's very interesting because I do get women who have been in relationships like that. They come to me when they've just come out of it um, or after a while that they've come out of it and still working. They don't really come to me if they're in it because it's just, you know, so, um, yeah, and it's very interesting. I do get people also who have gone through abductions or similar experiences. There is a video on my YouTube channel where I do explain my abduction and what happened to me. And, uh, well, I wasn't really abducted. They were just trying to, you know, but anyway, um, people who have had third dimensional density ET contact, because that's not something that's, I think, that common. It's more in the astral and in other planes, um, but the actual, yeah. And when this could, this could have been men, a man as well. I mean, you know, I'm sure men will come to you in the future that have been through uh, relationships where the woman has been, um, you know, yeah. abusive in, in, a, uh, in, in a sense. And that can happen. That, that does happen, right? I've had, yeah. yeah, I've had a few. Yeah, I've had a few. Um. And I guess that changes you as well in, uh, you know, who uh, who you allow into your vibration, who, who you're going to allow into your life as well. Because, you know, I mean, the, the, I guess it changes everything, doesn't it, in, in, in some respects, you know, because uh, you won't forget, will you? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think um, with regards to that, obviously, like, <sighs> It can be difficult to really be in a space of trust um, again, but with me, with my experience, like I've forgiven everything. It took me a while. I did have PTSD for about six months to a year after. Like I was, yeah, yeah I had PTSD, but um, I've forgiven. I haven't forgotten. So I still have very firm boundaries in place, um, especially because I also have a child. So she obviously is um, my priority, but I am in really complete trust um with the universe and i have had people sent into my path um which are for my highest alignment i'm at a point now where something like that would not even be allowed near my field yeah um, yeah and if it did come in there you'd, you'd know the signs do you know yeah, what i mean straight, yeah yeah because <laughs> yeah, it's just part of a life experience isn't it um so uh well thank thank you for being honest and sharing that because it just allows others who maybe have gone through it to realize that 
well, I'm not alone and, you know, maybe I need to get yeah. some help for that. So, um, and especially being on lockdown as well. <laughs> the, yeah. So. Uh, and I, I, I think um, what I want to say, which I think is very important is when you powerful woman and all women are powerful, um, but when you powerful woman, you or a man, um, that's, that's not, you know, that's not, yeah, um, you, uh, and when you understand and see how the polarity works, you see that all these things are all blockages. Everything that was sent to me was the polarity and the lessons were not, was trying to block me from doing the work that I'm doing now. Um, it was all sent to me from whatever is polarity lessons to make me stronger and whatnot. But I then saw it for what it was and it was blockages because I was already a channeler um, before um, I was I was in this in this traumatic experience. And then when I was in it, I couldn't channel, um, you know, my my connection was I was so worried about everything else. I was I was very, very lucky. I was only in it for like two, three months. So it really was not something. But in those two, three months, I think I probably cleared like a thousand years of lifetime. So. <laughs> and karma. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If karma even. <laughs> Even exists. I'm. I'm just putting that word out there as a joke. Do you know? Well, not a joke, but just you know. Yeah. I mean. Well, that's a good point. Do you? What do you think about karma? Do you think there's such a thing, or do you think that souls get back together if they've got unfinished business, and we just like to call it a word like karma? Um, karma is kind of like an energetic reverberation, if it makes sense. So it's something that you um, that you have and then can create, or um, and and that it needs to be. Yeah, I do believe in karma. Like, I mean, I've seen it in past lifetimes in the work that I do I do believe that um, people some people come here with more karma a lot of the souls coming in now come here with clear karma because they need to you know I don't want to really go into the karmic trap and whatnot because there's a lot of you know like different theories of that but I do believe that we have specific lessons um, that we went through in the past that perhaps we need to come here and make different choices and I also do believe that we can take on um, this is a good example we can take on karma from from um, family members. So my grandmother passed away in October of last year. She went through a very, very slow and painful death in the span of like three or four years. Um, and I knew that she had a lot of karma to clear. She was a beautiful grandmother, um, but she had a lot of karma to clear. She created karma in this lifetime and she had to clear it. So I actually asked, um, I think it was around August of last year, and I asked and I said, what can I do? Is there anything that I can do to help her pass on quicker? They said to me, you can take on the rest of her karma if you want to. And I was like, whoa, okay, no, thank you. I will send her light. I will send her healing. I will send her, do you know what I mean? But I was like, I can't. I don't, I've already got enough on my plate. Thanks, guys. <laughs> And then she eventually cleared it and passed on. So, I mean, I've experienced seeing karmic ties, experienced karma firsthand. Um, it's a term that I has been used quite loosely. Um, so I think people must just be mindful on, on how they use words. Words have power, um, you know. Um, but, yeah, I do. To answer your question, I do believe that there is um, karma. Yeah. Interesting. Thank you for that. And um, just going into sort of manifestation, creating the life that we want, um, you would feel that uh, we can create anything in this lifetime, do you feel that's possible, maybe? Yeah, I think there's a big misconception. Um, and also there's a very big um like manifesting in third dimensional density is okay you know writing down setting the intentions and whatnot but um, i'm actually in the process of writing an ebook with regards to this um which explains how to manifest in the quantum realm so what you do is yeah you actually um through meditation you get to a point where you are in zero point frequency zero point neutrality neutral point called whatever you want it's just when you're in that space of nothingness and everything um, and you get into that space and then you think of something that you want. So I'm just going to give the example of money because people want to manifest abundance and it's something, you know, you don't think of that. You think of what does that bring you? Safety, feeling safe, secure in a house, freedom, traveling. You feel the feeling that you have when you've obtained that thing. So now you are becoming the feeling that that thing that you want to obtain gives you but you um, you don't do it with attachment. So you do it um, with uh, 
integration and to a certain extent want but not with a need because the need comes from a place of lack and then that puts you back into polarity and into attachment and into a low vibrational frequency so it's easier explained than done because it's it takes you know practice and whatnot but that for me is the best way to manifest anything and everything um that you want and desire and a lot quicker than um, writing and setting your intentions, which still works, but it's just slower because, you know, you have limitations of time and space and you're in, in, in a high density space, third dimensional. So, so yeah. Right, right. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, as you say there, you know, don't be attached to the outcome. So whatever comes is the best. For, well, you always know it's the best, don't you? Do you know what I mean? In the end, you're like, Do you know what? That was the best, even though it wasn't exactly how I planned it or what I envisaged, envisaged it to be. God, that worked out for the best as well. Um, I think that just leads on to another question about following your gut feeling as well. Uh, how, you know, if we want to know what we, you know, I mentioned purpose a lot on this show, right? You know, people want to find their purpose. You know, what is my passion? What, what is, you know, what is it I'm here to do in a sense? But I don't know. I, I think follow what feels right. And if you, if we want to understand, if the simplest way of that is following your gut feeling as well, isn't it? And at any time, let's face it, we've not gone with our feelings, right? We know when it's telling us, you know, uh, maybe this ain't such a great idea. You just might want to rethink that. Oh, no, it's too late. Look, he's uh, signed the contract there. Oh, well, you know, we're still here with you, but we'll, you know, we'll work through this one. Yeah. So, yeah, following your gut feeling. Yeah, I think also like there is a very like I also get asked this all the time. What is my soul purpose? What is my soul mission? What what am I here to do? You can do anything. Anyone can do anything they want. You know, like it's you really are master co-creative beings of your own reality. So it's very important to empower um, ourselves on an individual level. But this is a nice thing that I like to explain also to the people that are, that work with me um, is understanding a little bit more what direction to go to is when you're doing something that you love. Um, it's your passion that you're following. Um, it's actually giving you a sustainable income um, and it's helping on a collective level. So you're in service to others and obviously not in service to self. So when those four needs are met, um, then you're in a good space and in a good direction um, as to where as to where you can go. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, it might not be your full time job is your passion. You know, you, you may have to share that out because we've all got things Judas to do do you know what I mean um so uh you know you may you may be doing something that you may not feel is completely you're passionate about or you or you really love but I think as long as you're giving it yourself some time some time in that day or or in that week that or for your passion I think it eventually it things can shift from that perspective can't they definitely yeah definitely and just ask like ask what it is your highest alignment what it is that you're meant to do what direction that you're supposed to go and just remember like your guides are always there they're they, they've been assigned to you to assist you they're going through their own lessons but they're there to assist you um the only way it sometimes can be difficult to listen to the messages because it's very non-linear so we expect messages to come through in a certain way um they're not they communicate you know through numbers through animals through nature through so many different things um through the elements um it's just when you in that space of anchoring and grounding and detachment and in the moment anchored within the the moment not worrying about the past or the future when you're in that space that's when you can really receive that's when you're really open to to receive and to understand and then you can see all the different options and possible timelines to walk down and choose which one is of the highest oh, alignment. That's, that sounds that's so good that sounds so good yeah absolutely and you know you obviously we, we're talking about guides quite a bit here so if people want to sort of i mean obviously they can meet their guides through having a session with yourself obviously but i mean if people want to just be try to be in tune with their guides, um, how would they do that? I think with meditation is a good one. Like, and again, anchoring into the moment and then look like so many people, you know, the numbers, you're seeing the numbers. Oh, it's actually your guides connecting, communicating. Don't attach to the number one or the two or the three, you know, don't, it's just, you're on the right track. Synchronicities mean you're on the right track. Um, listen to your body. So let's say you're in meditation and you ask a question, you get goosebumps. Okay. That's some kind of communication. Use tools, 
pendulums, tarot cards, obviously with safety in place and just being mindful, you know, but there's many different ways that you can get um, into contact with your guys. They are literally here to help you. So they actually can't wait for you to, you know, connect with them. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I, I I, bet as well. And I mean, you were helped on your journey. Uh, I, I'm sure that you, you know, had to work with uh, a few different maybe even light language uh, channelers, you know, that helped you on your journey. Um, you know, it wasn't just by yourself, was it? No, I had a few friends that really helped me. I had a very good um, Reiki master um, who I went to for Reiki for about five years. Um, this was before I even like started channeling or anything like that. And it was so interesting because how, what I saw and I understood after is that all that for five years, I went to Reiki once a month. Um, and, it's almost like all that work that I did sort of like stayed around my system. And then when I cleaned my physical body, I integrated all of it. And then I upgraded all in one go. Um, I had a very close friend of mine who was also a light language channeler who really helped me through the process. Um, so I was very grateful to, to have her because this was like 2018. No one even knew probably what light language was. Like, you know, it was quite, it's yeah. Quite, yeah, yeah fr fr new and fringy and not many people were doing it. And now it, it, it definitely a lot more. Uh, I mean, even if you just type it on YouTube, um, you know, uh, th there's a lot more doing it. And how do you sort of protect yourself when you're sort of, you know, going into this state, well, state, I guess, altered state, maybe? Uh, what do you do to protect yourself? Um, a lot. <laughs> I do a lot. <laughs> Always out of love, never out of fear. This is what I also explain to my clients. So, well, I work in pyramids. I've got about five that I work in. Um, the pyramid works very well because when I'm in here and I'm working on clients, I'll step out and whatever is meant to stay in here will be cleared. I do shield it. I shield um, myself. I shield my house, my cars, every family member that I have. I do clearing and shielding on all my electronics. So my television, my computer, or not that I watch television, but I do have a television television computer phone um everything because that's a whole other dimension that you want to clear as well um i clear my system also every single day um yeah and then i just really try to stay in a in a, in a good alignment and whenever i feel emotions like sadness and things like that i work through them um i don't really get angry ever anymore but if I would actually get uh, angry I would transmute that in a healthy way um you know um but also it's very important this is what I say to um my clients as well ones who channel and whatnot whenever you're channeling you're opening there's a beacon of light going up and what happens is everything wants the light things want the light you know what I mean so it's important to cloak yourself also um just imagining an invisibility cloak over your system so I do quite a lot I clean my whole house about three times a week like this is my life um I work on like between five to eight people a day so it is a lot of um and before every client I will also call in and clear and do everything for each individual that I work on so when I say there's a lot of discipline and structure they're really really is <laughs> yeah yeah i mean there's so many more channels out there nowadays and it's only just growing do you know what i mean and um yeah you've got to go with who you feel resonates but um i think uh when the message messages can become distorted sometimes i think when when they're when you're sort of if the message is you know telling you you know how is is well not well yeah it's, it's commanding you in a sense do you know what i mean rather than allowing you free will um do you know where i'm going with this it's it, the, the, yeah. there are different messages out there sometimes isn't, isn't there i think it's very important so this is what's also been going on um on a collective level um whenever a channeler promotes anything that has to do with division or they like saying they are better than you or they are some ascended master or they are in contact with this this and you need to do this and you need to do that please like just use your own discernment obviously different people resonate with different things but um this is my belief and what i believe in that um you know whenever you're speaking to high vibrational frequency beings there will never be uh, a sense of having to do this or having to do that there will never be a message that spreads division or hate or separation or even confusion do you know what i mean it's generally messages of love yes there, there can be more things you know like of understanding um, and of knowledge and whatnot but there will always be you know 
an empowerment of the self. High dimensional beings don't want us to worship them. They want us to empower ourselves. Like literally, that's what they want. Yeah, so, yeah. I, I, I've heard of stories of, uh, you know, I won't mention names right now, but I might do one day of, of you know, people having sessions with a particular channeler where, you know, he's told them to, you know, cut the connection off with a particular family member or something like that. Do you know what I mean? Or something really div divisionist. Um, and it's like, oh, God, man, it's... But, um, yeah. you know, you, you, you get into a, a sense of trust because some of the information coming through is so true and so accurate. And how would they know? And then it's always that, that the other side that comes in. Do you know what I mean? That, that, that's deceiving and yeah. controlling. But that's, but, that, but that's when a channeler is being compromised and that's when a channeler is not keeping their field clear and there's stuff coming in that's intrusive. That's telling them things that, you know, are not in the highest alignment. I think it goes back to... The clarity that the person has who is doing the work yeah, in I, my opinion yeah and i think that 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 you could say it's some sort of attachment or something like that right but i think it's i think they want to work with what they're working with i think they've got major issues where they've not dealt with their own stuff and yeah that their human manipulation is just as uh, attracted to being manipulated do you know what i mean so, uh, and, and used like that and uh the, well, what do I know? But it happens. So, yeah, just, you know, um, I'm, yeah, that's interesting uh, what you have to say there as well. Yeah, I think people are also attracted to quick power. Um, and I think that maybe working with some beings that are not of the highest of alignments gives them that. Um, meanwhile, when you just work with the light, it's very slow. <laughs> There's no, there's no, there's no shortcut. It's very slow. It's consistent. It's commitment. It's building spiritual strength, but it's incredibly rewarding. Um, and it goes also down, yeah, as you said, to the individual's discernment. If there's still wounds that are very open and very, I mean, I'm still clearing past lifetimes. Um, I'm still clearing. I'm you know, still clearing and releasing. So we all in process, we all in journey, but it's understanding when you're going through that. Oh, okay. I'm doing it work on myself. Thank you. No clients for a few days. I need to take time for myself. Do you know what I mean? And that's all you need to do. Yes. Yeah. Now we're going to get into the the um, well, your channeling as well. Uh, we'll we'll um, probably have some uh, a message as well. I think that's important. But let's just the final bit here as well, because I'm conscious of your time as well, right? Because uh, you've kindly, uh, you know, you're doing this late your time. So let's look at the Ukraine and the ongoing issues right now in the world so this is obviously very heavy on people's heart this is um um this is a, a time of of change and that's that's obvious what have you brought through do you think in regards to uh or what's your feelings tuned in feelings to what's going on right now in the world well that's uh, <laughs> that's quite some question um we in a phase of transition I think um, the year 2022, um, two and six, it's numbers that come to conclusion. There is karma that is clearing and closing um, the same way. So this is what I've channeled. Again, people can take it or leave it. And um, we're in a phase now where we are actually re-going through a situation where we're clearing Atlantean karma. So I work a lot with Atlantean energy. I've had many lifetimes in Atlantis and Lemuria. So I... I have a lot of very good memory and recollect what went on there. Um, and what happened in, you know, was, was machines took over. There was a massacre, Holocaust, where well, there was more than one. But anyway, humanity was not responsible with the technology and with the power that it kind of was given. Um, so that that is what we clear now. Now we are in a phase where we have choice. We can either go, well, we actually already entered positively polarized fourth dimensional density, but we, 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 we can go in a direction where we will clear this karma and not make the same decision as a collective, you know, and be able to integrate the technology in a good alignment and in a, in a higher frequency for us to proceed um, in the, in the evolution, you know, and not go down the path that we went down before, but uh, you know, again, this is this is theory. You can take it or leave it. Um, I do believe that um, sending love is obviously, you know, always a good thing, always the, the answer to be in a space of love. And to also, especially for people who are doing energy work, stay above the polarity, observe, have knowledge, have understanding, know what's going on, be 
you know, be up to date with what's going on, but don't, don't feed into it. Don't feed your energy into it. Send the love, stay above the polarity and hold the frequency of love. And then everything will follow and everything will sort of catalyze from there as well. I think it's shown a lot of people their true colors, especially within um, this community as well, uh, where some people have just, um, you know, um, stated what they think is what's really going on and it's just it just it just feels like so much disinformation and, and misinformation and they you know and they call themselves spiritual but um uh they're just feeding into so much fear and disinformation and it's a shame it's a shame uh, i think everyone's sorry, everyone's truth is individual um so if something might be truthful for me and not for someone else and whatnot but i agree with what you say there has been a lot of in a sense misinformation and a lot of feeding into into the system. Well, there's people the with large followings that, um, unfortunately, I think have mental health issues, and and uh, not even just that. They also uh, they're on some trip. They're on some journey where they want to play out their own James Bond character. Do you know what I mean? And uh, you know they've <laughs> they've got the intel, and uh, and people love them, and uh, they they're just completely misleading people. But that's the people's journey that want to be led by them, and that's their journey to want to mislead people. But it's it's rife. And, uh, you know, it, it, yeah, so, um, but it, it's interesting how, you know, it, 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 these things eventually play themselves out, do you know what I mean? And the truth does, you know. Definitely. Could come to I get actually told, to, I don't really follow much because I get actually told not to because I get sent, you know, if there is something that I need to see, they will show me, they will say, look at this, look at that, this you must watch and whatnot. So I'm not, not that I'm not too familiar. I don't really know what's um being said from specific channelers, but I have seen a lot of people give into the polarity who, who maybe weren't doing it before. Now they are. Oh, now they so, are. Yeah. Now they've. Now, now they are. Yeah, yeah, abs Yeah, um, and that's their journey. Um, but I think it should be talked about and, and noted. And, and you know, so, and there's a lot of people, isn't there, that want you know they just. They don't want to be. They want to go to the fifth dimension, <laughs> and I'm like, guys, um, we haven't even made it out of this dimension yet. We, you know, look, look where we are. We and we want to be here. I, I don't want to go anywhere. I don't want to go to no fifth dimension. I want. I want to experience this. I want this. I came for this. You chose, yeah, yeah. And I think it's important to understand that the fifth dimension isn't a place. I mean, I ac access fifth dimensional density every time I channel. I access six, seventh. You can go up and whatever, but. You need to be anchored here. You're here. You're on earth. You're in this body. You're in this reality. So this needs to be your priority. You cannot go anywhere if you haven't mastered the grounding and the being here. Isn't that, but you, you but that's so rife, isn't it right now? You know, so, and I get it. People, people, they don't want to, you know, they want to, uh, they don't want, want this experience because it is painful, isn't it? For some people, especially right now, but it's um, like you say, you chose it. And uh, there's so many wonderful things you can you can do here. So many wonderful things. Just be you. You're, you're important. And, and pain um, and grief opens up the heart chakra. So this is what's needed at this moment in time for more opening um, for collectively. Well, hasn't it shown like the, the amount of pain that uh, what's going on right now, even regardless of what caused it, right, that it's happening, um, just to see the outpouring of, of love from people and the care. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah, it was very beautiful. I actually did, um, after everything happened last week, I think it was Monday or Tuesday when everything started breaking out, my one colleague from Italy, she messages me and she says, what are you doing tomorrow night? And it was so interesting because I, I always work late every evening. And that evening I had two hours and I was like, actually, I've got to, she's like, please, let's get online and do a fundraiser for the children in Ukraine. So we did that. And a lot of people come together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll probably do another one next week. I always do them on my Instagram channel um, for the children. Yeah, I always raise for the children. Well, uh, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, thank you. Uh, and and I'm sure that you know it, it, it'll cause other people to do things. And I think this is going to cause people to come into their purpose. For some people, it, it was the only way. For some people, to, it's so many reasons why this is happening. Just like anything else that happens in our life, it's it's you know if, well. For example, what about when one of our family members has a disease, right? You know, or a life changing disease. Uh, um, isn't it not just for the person that's going through it? It's for everyone that's that, that's experiencing it in their own way and what they're learning from it. 
yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, we could go on forever here because there's, there's a plethora of questions I could do for you. But I think what's important right now is um, let's just show people what well, what do you if if I was to say you know what would you feel how what would you do in this moment in the sense like a message or or, or a session or a light language session what would you you feel is the right thing to do? I'm going to open channel and I'll do a full system clearing, um, just for people's energy field. I will remove cords. I will just give a taste of what it is and how I work and what it is that I do. So um, I can ask you to, to just maybe close your eyes. And come in a space of acceptance, of openness, of allowing for what is needed for you at this moment in time, surrendering. Divine rays coming in, 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 anchoring, 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 pushing out, 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 old densities, clean, releasing, clean, releasing, clean, releasing, clean, releasing, clean, releasing, clean, releasing, 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 opening, 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 so help with opening the heart. Opening, 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 anchoring, 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 divine rays coming in, more light, more light, more light. Okay, okay, okay. Calling in angelic rays, anchoring, 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 anchoring. Anchoring, 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 anchoring into blueprint structure, calling in more light, more light, more light, more light, more light, more light, opening, 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 clean, releasing, 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 decoding, decoding, detangling, detangling. This is a clearing now for the solar plexus, decoding, decoding, releasing, detangling, detangling, pushing out, 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 old densities, pushing out, pushing out, pushing out, calling in more light, more light, more light, more light, more light, rainbow rays, rainbow rays, anchoring, 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 or Raise anchoring, 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 anchoring. Nyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyo
paradigms, old structures, leaving now, leaving now, leaving now, 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 Head or any part of your body, please do it now. Clean, release, and 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 clean, release. Yeah, she took that three, Mataka, she that three, or Koro, she not a cat, me to a isha, taka, cream, not a cricket, 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 cream, now. Terra taka, Koro, Kora, crook, not three, I shmet a cat, Ria, set the Koro, Koro, create a rhyme at the Koro, ya chee, Matata, Tata, 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 Nayashe of Tokokona, Matera, Shita Tata, Taisita Kakrik, not root cut cream at Karatiro, Shita Kakruk, Tratra, Tratra, Nayotro Isha. Then my shat cook, 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 raisha tika tata tatra, trot, 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 crack, 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 ishma tera sitra. Some of you might feel nausea, dizziness as things release. It's normal. Naishma tokoro isha teka, rua te isha teka, tiarka overheating, yaishma tkara tingling, naishma tkara itigere, shia no tokora iare etre, oh, na iya, shito, na tika imashina tkara. Shkat karat kar, remembering who you are, remembering what you are here. Codes of knowledge, more codes of knowledge. Oh, okay, okay. Anchoring, 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 anchoring. More light, more light, more light, more light. More rays, more rays coming in, coming in, coming in, 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 in. Opening, 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 opening to universal understanding. Naishma to koko lo ishe tatriya te kara ishe no taka. Tayo to kora ishma te ka trua era ishe. Teyo no to ko icha taka kri no to leishma tara isa nara to kora letting go, letting go, letting go, letting go. What no longer serves you. Clear now, clear now, clear now, clear now, clear and releasing, 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 now releasing, now releasing, now, 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 now. Energy flows, energy flows, energy flows, energy flows from the crown to the throat to the throat to the heart to the solar plexus, the sacred to the root from the root to the sacred to the solar plexus, to the heart to the throat to the throat to the crown from the crown to the throat to the throat to the heart to the solar plexus, the sacred to the root from the root to the sacred to the solar plexus, to the heart to the throat to the throat to the crown from the crown to the throat to the throat to the heart to the solar plexus to the root from the root to the second of the solar plexus to the heart to the third to the third to the crown energy flows freely in the seven chakras energy flows freely in your seven chakras now open grounded balanced and aligned open grounded balanced and aligned 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 a
sometimes I get sent to realms that I've never been to before. Sometimes I'm a channel beings that I've never seen before. Like there's so much out there. So I'm always, always learning constantly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, I just felt that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Altair, let's just remind people of your website one more time. Uh, yeah, my website is www.altealucrezia. So it's my two names.com. And all my services are on there. You can literally just take anything directly from my store page. I do Akashic clearings, so clearing past lifetimes, um, light language activations, which is this what you saw. Um, I do full system clearings. I do coaching. I do a six week program. I have an ebook on cords and a whole course on how to activate your own um, psychic abilities. Um, so, yeah, so you can just have a look there there's a lot of different services i'm quite versatile but you can also like there's a contact form you can just contact me um and then i'll assist you in you know helping you see what is um for your highest alignment at this moment in time and i also have an instagram um with all my art and everything i do um i do yeah art for specific um frequency and specific can we just have a look at the art as well because you've got some art there with you that we never got a chance just to look at got a few pieces here that I do so this is kind of like some of it this was I think this was for two clients that came through this is also another one it's mainly Atlantean codes that I channel I do channel codes as well um and then yeah. this is all hand drawn hey I don't need wow. use rulers or anything yeah yeah <laughs> yeah it's all hand drawn like I don't um and i don't know what's coming through until it's done which is quite interesting for me as well. yeah, so, yeah. yeah that's incredible so let me get now again this is all on instagram as well is it some of these most of these pictures yeah. your instagram handle is um light codes by a l a which is my initial okay well we'll link that below uh on this video as well and um yeah you'll be able to find that on instagram well um altea i just want to say uh a big thank you for coming on and sharing your journey being so honest and um and just for the work that you do as well um and um, you know uh and the help that you're giving people so just thank you so so much Thank you so much for having me. It's really been such a pleasure and an honor. Um, yeah, and I'm very, very, very grateful. So thank you.